Hey guys, so this is part two and this is the graphite version of the shading technique. Or shading practice to enable you to practice going darker without fear of ruining any of your work and it's something that you can easily do in front of the TV. So this is what we're going to be doing over the course of this video and I shall be talking through all the different elements that we will be covering to help you improve your shading and really just to grow your confidence with regards to going darker so let's crack on okay so first of all really sorry for the terrible edit at the beginning of the video didn't quite think that one through but hey ho uh, yeah, so like the first tutorial, if you haven't seen it, I recommend you go and watch it first. Although it's to do with coloured pencils, it gives you the basis of what we're going to be discussing today. And uh, again, I will link down in the comments below where you can download your worksheets. The geos will be different to what I'm working on today, but that doesn't matter. It just gives you the options to do both. You can freehand the geodes or you can use the sheet that I've given you. You can trace them, just colour directly on the sheet, whichever takes your fancy really. With today's tutorial, I would recommend starting with a 2B and a 4B. I don't think you particularly need to go any darker with regards to the grading of pencil that you use for today's tutorial. I generally, in a lot of my portraits, try and do 90% of it with just the 4B because it's uh, quite amazing how you can get a dive a diverse uh, shading difference between your darks and your light lights <laughs> just by using one pencil but you can do it however you however you decide it's really up to you so the pencil you see in my holder there is is a 4B as I say it's generally my go-to what we're going to do is rather than using any blending uh, tortillons, stubbies, paper stumps, whatever you want to call them, we're going to be using either the cross hatching or just the, the hatching technique really. Just saves a bit of time for today. But again, make sure you mark out where your light will be hitting so you then understand where the light won't be hitting and that is where you need to work to your darkest. So you can either work from your light to dark, but in general, graphite, you work from your darkest to your light. So that's how we've done it today. You can blend it if you want to, if you want to make it nice and smooth. But for today's tutorial, I didn't hugely worry about it, to be honest. I just wanted to get the dark and the shades down where they needed to be. Number two, I completely messed up. I have no idea what shape that is. So we just ignored that one. So as you can see, I'm just first of all going in where the deepest shadows will be and that's probably the easiest way to practice because that's in general what you do when you work with graphite unlike color pencils where you work from light to dark you you generally work from dark to light with your graphite you can overlay the whole subject with one shade completely and then you can work out exactly where you want to go dark and you can always use your blue tack or eraser, whatever you're using to pick out some of the highlights. It's entirely up to you. But this way I find easier because you are defining your shadows before you go and work on anything else. Now on this particular diamond, I had light sources coming from two areas and that is literally from the back, from the left and right. So the front plane would be the darkest because that's where the light was not hitting. So. Again, it's all about confidence building and all about learning how you can go darker. If you decide you want to move up to your 6B, your 9B, I would even think there's a 12B out there, you're welcome to do so. But it's worth practicing with just one colour and it's also a good way then of practicing your pressures and your layerings. Because with graphite, ideally you need to be layering a lot to get your darks down rather than doing it all in one go. But again, it's whatever you're more comfortable with this tutorial is pretty quick because there's not a huge amount really to cover in the way of what we haven't covered in part one you may be a graphite artist full stop but it doesn't hurt to watch both because again it just gives you a bit more of an idea in the previous video i went into it in a bit more detail i added a few shadows here i fancied doing something a little bit different and that was indicating where again the shadows would fall because of the light source so it's worth having a go at doing that because it was quite fun the large geode I've 
given to you slightly different to this one because I had to redraw them all because I forgot to scan them in my infinite wisdom that apparently I have and it's more about making sure that you get your darks in the right places and of course that you're going dark enough so each section will be intersecting somewhere it will go down somewhere it will be behind something there'll be planes or, or surfaces that have no light source hitting them and those are the areas that really you need to be confident in going darker in so in this instant i decided to have the lights coming in from the top oh apologies i used an hb and a 5 8b for this one for the previous i definitely used a 4b but for this one i've gone up to a, a 5b i think that's because i wanted to show you you know how dark you can afford to go without worrying too much now i did want to say that depending on where you shade and that's the joy of doing these geodes depending on where you shade and where you decide you want your lights and darks falling you can completely change the shape and the dynamics of your geode so where i've got this looking like it's slicing down and through you could alter that and actually have it looking like it's coming upwards rather than downwards it's it's really clever and it's just a fun way of one observing again where your highlights and your shadows will fall you're going to get bored of me saying this and two playing with what parts of your geode do have the light hitting on them because then it it can like for example where i've just done it makes it more concave so if you want it convex so if you think of a dome convex is the outer edge of the dome if you think of convex you've turned the dome upside down so you're in that dip you can change whether it's concave or convex and it can really change the dynamic of your drawing so that's why it's important for you to practice where you need to go dark and where you need to go light because if you get that wrong you change the shape entirely have a good practice i really do hope you enjoy these and please let me know in the comment if you do make sure you go and watch number one i'll, I'll add this, that on the end of this video for you if you've enjoyed it please don't forget to hit that subscribe button hit the all notifications so that way you'll be notified of when i go live which is every wednesday and i would love a thumbs up as the youtube loves that too and yeah good luck have fun and i shall see you on the next video